coming. Uh, I understand today is the first snowstorm of the year. Uh, you guys did a great job. This morning was a little bit more challenging, so we're happy you guys made it. You got a whole lot of extra food, which is which is great. And then following our two presentations, we're going to be going out to the showroom outside, and then you'll get a tour of the various products that we are going to be speaking through uh, right now. So we're going to start at the beginning. Uh, I represent Medico, which is a high security key company. Okay, so we're starting less intelligent, and then we're going to finish with the most intelligent, Stefan, over here, uh, with highly intelligent stuff. But before we get into that, I want to talk a little bit about the needs of security in the marketplace. So, I, you know what, actually, one more thing I want to start with. Let's do a little bit of a round table so we know who you guys are and where you guys are coming from. So I guess we'll start here and we'll work our way around. Mm -hmm. There you go. Perfect. Thank you. Are we, you want, yeah, there you go. You, Fantastic. Thank you. Perfect, thank you. Perfect, thank you. Fantastic, thank you. Kobe. You're hiding in the back. So my name is Kobe Brass and I am the West End Canada ISS manager. So um sit on the front of the West and I'll let you There you go. So again, thank you all. And now we'll get started. So starting with the needs of security in the marketplace. Coming from the keying aspect, so your very, very basic security needs, you want to be sure your keys cannot be copied, right? That's kind of the what you want to ensure with a mechanical key system. You want a high security sol solution, right? You want something that not only are your keepers, keys protected, but you're keeping people out. They can't break in through your keys. I need a solution that is simple and reliable. You don't want to complicate things. I want to protect my investment, whether that's property investment or that could be the system itself. You don't want to have to continuously put money into maintaining this. I want to control and schedule access. Okay, now things just got a little bit funky when it comes to the key world. This is typically not something you manage with mechanical key, right? Now you're getting more intelligent in traditional access control. But nevertheless, it's a need in the security marketplace. I want audit and accountability. I just want to say this one has become way more important than this one. Right, is the information aspect of things. Being able to know who did what, to be able to put accountability or responsibility on somebody. I want an easier way to manage my keys. Is anyone here, you mentioned it, so you probably know this specifically, how challenging it is to manage a mechanical key system and actually keep it right without, you know, in five years from now, does your system still do what it's supposed to do? All those kinds of things, it's a very challenging thing to do. And of course, you'll all understand this, control costs. I want to do all of this, I don't want to pay for it, or I don't want to pay a lot for it, right? So this is what we get as manufacturers from our clients, such as iMotion, and iMotion gets this from you guys where you're saying, all right, I want to do all this fun stuff, but I want to manage my costs, obviously. So, there was a great invention one day called the key ring, where they said, I'm going to put all my keys on one ring, which really just made it easier to lose them all at the same time. Okay? That, that's true. That's what happened with keys. So, that or you drown because you end up with this giant thing and you funnel like St. Louis and you go straight to the bottom. But then you got, you know, this guy. And I, I always pick at Stefan for this when we're doing pr uh, presentations together because he started like this, and now this is what he looks like. So... 
can your key system keep up with the changes in your environment, your business needs? Right? I mentioned five years from now, does your key system do what it needs to do? Well, this key with intelligent key turns into a single credential. That is what we are going for. We're trying to eliminate all those challenges and have a key that can be programmed and managed and changed with your industry, with your business needs. Also, if you lose the famous Supermaster key system ring that goes everywhere, well, a key like this, I can just turn it off. I don't ever have to worry about a lost key again. That's where we're going. We're making keys intelligent. Not as intelligent as the fan, but we're getting there. Also, accountability and audit now, right? We talked about who is looking at your stuff. Can you actually trace a mechanical key? You can't. You may know who owns it. You have no idea what they've done with it, necessarily. You could really look at video, right? But in the video world, how do you find a particular point when you have no idea when you're looking for that point? You sit someone, you know, you have intelligent technology that tries to track motion and then brings up a thing for every motion. You're wasting time. You're spending time trying to find that stuff. And what if they're allowed to go there, but they're just not allowed to look at a particular record, right? There's this kind of stuff. So social insurance, uh, security numbers, medical records, payment information, employee files. This is just a small little kind of bubbles that bring up real compliances that you have to follow. PIPITA is an example, right? Uh, NERC, it's, North, it's a Re Electrical Reliability Corporation Act that's compliance. PCI is payment card industry. All that stuff has compliance for audit. Intelligent keys give you that. So now, wherever you have a lock, you know exactly when it's unlocked, down to the filing cabinet, if that's the case. Right? So, there's also technology threats, new ones. This, has anyone ever seen this interface before? Probably not, because you guys are all good people. Um, no, it's an application called KeyMe. It's, it's a real application. You can all download it on your phones right now. You take a picture of two sides of a key for a few bucks, and a couple days later, you get it in the mail. So you do not need to steal keys anymore. You just need to get a picture of a key. And now you have access to wherever that key went. Okay, now, it's a legitimate company which means they won't copy a key that is patent protected. Legally, they're not allowed to do it. But, anyone know what this is? 3D printer. So, this is being taught in school now. I was in a CJEP last year doing uh, an audit, and there was artwork on the wall that was made by 3D printers. That's what they're teaching in school. I am not an app developer, nor do I will probably get into that, but I can guarantee you you know, our kids are learning app development in school. It's part of their curriculum these days. So this is cheap on eBay now. You only need a little tiny thing. It's got to print a key. A key is not very big. I'm not trying to print a house here, right? So a couple hundred bucks, and I write an app that can turn what I take a picture of into a little plastic key. Now I have the master key to a school, as an example. Property management, whatever the case is, right? This is a threat that no mechanical key system can protect you from. And I sell them as a living. Okay? So, not only that, mechanical key system has limitations, right? Static master key system design. Anyone here ever been involved with the designing of a master key system? Not really, sort of. You're lucky. It's a pain in the ass. Okay? And not only that, if we were to decide on a system today for whatever facility, we all went into some joint venture and bought a big high rise in Montreal. We would have to decide today for the life of that system, every possibility that you can think of. Because once it's created, you can't change it. It's not flexible. Lost key and rekey liabilities, obviously. Lost key costs money. Liability costs more money, potentially. Right? What's the liability cost? Is it just this? Be someone stole a laptop? Or did someone walk into an electric room die because they touched something they weren't supposed to get into? That is now a whole other story, right, of liability. No accountability. We talked about this. We don't know what these, what, who's doing what with keys. And 24-hour access. Is that appropriate? Maybe I want to limit that, right? And then finally, patent life. So when you do get into the high security world, you often hear this key is patented. A patent is only good for 20 years, maximum. 
that's assuming you purchased it on the day it came out, right? Which you probably didn't. So how much life is left in that patent? How much risk do you have when the patent is expired? So the life of a key system is three things. It's deployment, you start it up, it's management, and then finally it's exhaustion. Exhaustion could be you ran out of changes because you, you know, you've come to the end of your vision when you designed it, or you have lost control. So what do you do? You start over. You do it again. You spend more money over and over and over again. And that doesn't stop. So a mechanical key system is a security product that no matter what has costs year over year over year. And they're usually, I say hidden, they're there, they're budgeted somewhere, but it's automatically part of the budget because that's just the way you have to manage it. It's money that you're going to put into it. It's like a car. It's the best example I can give is a car. You buy a car. You never just buy a car and then, you know, that car is great until the day that it dies and you never have to put a cent into it, right? That doesn't work. You got to buy tires. You got to put oil changes. You got to put gas. You got to do all this thing just to keep your car running. That's a key system. Right? So all this kind of stuff makes you essentially repurchase your key system over and over and over and over and over again. So you end up buying it maybe 10 times over in the period of five to 10 years that you use it. So here's this continuum of products. Mechanical sits down here. Low, low cost, low intelligence, right? Intelligence is the key holder. Unfortunately, key holders not, are not always intelligent. Then the security trend is that way. You guys want to get more intelligent products. Stefan is going to show you some fantastic products later. That's going to be really online, really in that intelligent opening space. But there's a whole lot of stuff in between. And the reason why I'm pointing that out is you need access control. And these are the reasons, right? Lost or stolen keys, duplicate keys, key control, maintenance costs, rekeying, audit data, the need for audit data, you can't turn it off. So then why don't you put access control everywhere? You guys tell me the answer. I'm going to get you guys to talk for a change. Okay. Power, cost, right? So two things, those are the two perfect answers. Cost, number one, and two, it's impossible. You can't do it, right? If I say, you know, that padlock in the field that's two and a half kilometers away, what are you going to do there? You're not going to put traditional access control. You're probably not even going to put a wireless access control. One, you don't have network, you don't have power, and even if I could power it with a battery, in Montreal right now, I wouldn't be a happy battery at minus 30, right? Or not for very long anyway. So how do we bridge the gap then between traditional access control, the, the smart, intelligent online stuff, and a mechanical key system? Because obviously there's something missing. That's where intelligent keys fit in. That's the product that we want to highlight right now. So Intelligent Key is, in, it's, uh, yeah, excuse me, it's a sophisticated access control system with features that allow you to program access in a credential, have audits, so you now have responsibility of who's going where and when, and it's all mounted, managed through a cloud software as a solution. Okay? That is what Intelligent Key is. If you remember nothing other than today is to remember that. Intelligent key is not traditional access control, and it's more than mechanical. It's its own category, okay? Where this is giving you 24 hours, seven access with no accountability, this is giving you real-time control. That is very different. Real-time means I open up my laptop, I hit a button, and immediately that change is there. That person walks up and it doesn't work kind of thing. This is not real-time. It allows you to quickly change access rights to obtain audits and accountability, but you're not doing it in real time. It's a very important differentiation. But the installation is identical to a mechanical lock, meaning that core comes out, the electronic core comes, goes in, and you walk away. Okay? So you're saving significantly on the cost of installation. So where does it go? How do you divide up your security, you know, if I took 100% of the openings in a facility, so every one of you, think of an application in your head, they all can be different, and I ask you, how many openings will get traditional access control, wireless or wired, but online access control? 
it is only about five and we're starting to see on newer buildings up to 10% if it's new construction and stuff like that. It see, like, God, it's 10% doesn't seem like a lot. You really, remember, I'm using the word opening and I'm not using the word door. That is a very, very different word, a very different definition. A door is a subset of an opening. An opening counts everything you lock. Okay? A cabinet is an opening. A padlock is an opening. Server cabinet door is an opening. A safe, uh, a safe is an opening. All these are openings, but they're not doors. So when we think access control, we're only always thinking about the door. So I want to challenge you guys to think of everything that's not a door. This could be heavy machinery. It, yes, anything. Anything that you've got to lock in the key is what we're talking about here. That's why this 5% now makes sense. Because you can walk into a facility and you'll notice there's only a handful of doors. Even if all the doors look like they have access control, there's still a ton of keys everywhere else. Okay? So that 5%, 10% is your traditional access control. Fantastic. That is the right solution. It's your front door with 400 people walking by. Okay? But then if I ask you the question now, think of all the openings, all those weird things, anywhere in everything that you manage, and say, where would you love to have some of the control that you have with your access control system that you don't have. And you only have mechanical and it's the ones, the trouble spots that you always have to you know, deal with one way or another. You will find there's about 30% of those openings that you need that, you're just not getting it. That is where this product fits. Okay, that's, that's the, the niche, so to speak. And it's a, it's a pretty big niche. Okay? The rest, it's mechanical. It's your bathroom doors that you don't care about. It's your closets. It's whatever, that kind of stuff, right? So what if I lose a key? You're going to steal paper towel, right? Now, because I love Intelligent Key and that's what I represent, I'm going to tell you Intelligent Key is actually applicable to 100% of the openings. And you're going to say, well, why and how? Because you just told me otherwise. And I'm going to ask you another question now. Your access control, what is your override? Typically, it's a mechanical key, right? So, do you know how many times we do consultation and help end users or dealers and we go in and doing site surveys and stuff like that, and this beautiful door and all this investment, it's 5,000 bucks, we just did a fantastic, beautiful door and access control. But I can go to Walmart, get a key cut, and walk through. Yeah? That happens all the time. Because we forget, we get lost in all this intelligence that we're putting on the opening that we forget to secure the basic. Is that key override? Well, Intelligent Key is the perfect complementary product for your access control openings. Now, the question at is, this opening that I'm putting access control on, is it because I just want convenience and not security? Or is it because I want security? If it's security, that override should also be Intelligent Key. Then there's no one that can ever walk through that door, power, no power, network failure, whatever, and you don't have an audit and you don't have control. That's where Intelligent Key fits as a complementary product to traditional access control. Yeah. No power in the lock. The power comes from the key. So it works complete. You can have no power here. Everything works. When we, ha we can show you that actually as well. So the power is in the key, not in the lock. Then you say, okay, well, the 65% that's, that's remaining, the broom closets and all those other doors and all that fun stuff. Well, the reality is, if you are managing 35 to 40 percent of your facility already in intelligent key and access control, this 60 to 65 percent is still giving you all the pains of the other stuff that we talked about at the beginning of the presentation, right? All those re keys, all the lost keys, all the locks, and all that kind of stuff. Well, this will shrink over time because what's going to happen is someone's going to lose a key, and you're going to have to rekey. You're going to have to do something. Well, instead, you already have the infrastructure in place. You're just going to swap out a lock. Here you go. That comes out. This one goes in. Have a nice day. That opening is now part of that and already managed by the keys that are already in circulation that are electronic. Eventually, you will end up with a 100% intelligent space. And that's where the industry is going. Does that make sense? So, what is the benefit then? If we break down intelligent key and start looking at the product, you get controlled access. The keys are programmed with access rights. Okay. Accountability. Every time a key gets inserted into a lock, the lock remembers it and the key records it. So that audit is sitting in two places. 
Easy installation. Quite literally, especially if it's what's called interchangeable core in the mechanical world. Control key, core comes out, this core goes in, 10 seconds later you walk away, that is now an access control opening or controlled access opening. Retrofit. Medico is a retrofit company. All we do is make locks for every different application. Okay. Affordability. This is extremely cost effective, both in comparison to traditional access control, but also in comparison to mechanical if you build the ROI over time. Because remember, it's a car. You keep putting money into it. This system, you don't. You purchase it, it is in place, and you are just managing it via a software. You're not rekeying, you're not re doing any of that stuff. Okay? And then cloud based software, easy managing. <clears throat> so, how does it work? How do you get the information to the locks to the keys? Because I know I'm sure some of you are starting to think that. If it's offline, how, do I, how am I doing it? Right? So, think of traditional access control. Now, flip it on its head completely. Traditional access control, you're managing the door. Right? I make a change in my computer, panel, cabling, or wireless, that door and then gets that piece of information. The card, which is essentially just a serial number of some kind, shows up, it checks, yes, you can go in, or no, you can't. If I reverse that, the cylinder is a card. It's got a unique identifier. The credential holds the intelligence. I walk up, put this key into a lock, locks identifies itself as a particular number, the key then says, yes, open, because I have you're on my list, okay, or you're within my schedule, etc. So to update the credentials, you don't have to go to the lobby to get the key. Exactly. So what if you don't have that key? Who doesn't have the key? The administrator? Well, yeah, it's locked. Yeah. Yep. You're safe with it. How can you do that if the credentials are located on the lock? One more slide and I'll answer your question. <laughs> but I like it. That means you guys are you're catching on. So... Actually, even in this slide, we start to answer that. We start by installation. Okay, you put out the locks, you get all your keys. Then you program everything. So in the software, you set up, you know, Joe's lock, Adam's lock, uh, not lock, sorry, key, uh, Chris's key, etc. Everybody in their keys and what they have access to. Then there's two ways to do this. This is a USB programming device, meaning it gets connected to a computer. Okay, that computer's got a little key client that communicates with the database. You can have as many of those key clients set up anywhere that those laptops have internet access. It's not an administrator that needs, it's not access to the software, it's a communication tool, right? So key goes in here, that key gets its rights. Then you also have remote capabilities. So you have Bluetooth keys as an option. So you open up your phone, get the access rights. You have wall programming device, which iMotion has a fantastic display here. Good job, guys. Okay. To get that information. And then every single time these things get touched, the audits are then uploaded into the system and you access rights are downloaded into the key. So then how did you manage it now? So lost keys and things like that. So let's say I'll give you a scenario and it's called key revalidation. This is a third thing you program on a key. So one, access rights, where am I allowed to go? Two, schedule, when am I allowed to access it? Third is key revalidation interval. That could be anywhere from one day to one year. So that means I set this key to expire on a particular interval. Example, daily. So here's your key, right? I give it to you, I put access rights, I put my schedule, and I say, daily, you need to validate that you still have this key. At one of those devices. So you can't do it. You can't. No, and there is a reason behind it. It's always time limited and not use limited. Let's say I go to a lock. I put the key in a lock, and then I'm talking to someone. I don't turn. That's one that's used, and I never open the door. Yep. You don't have recs and you don't have, so you don't have door position information with this system at all. So we're not connected that way. We are just saying lock, unlock, lock, lock kind of thing. That's it. Because you're using existing hardware on the door. So because we can't tell if you actually successfully entered, open the door, whatever. So I can put my key into a padlock. It's green. If I don't actually turn it, open the padlock, whatever the case is, my audit shows that I accessed it, even though I, ne I didn't necessarily pull it and open it. Because this system can't do that, 
by design, because then you have to start putting a whole bunch of other intelligence on that opening to get that information. So we limit it by time. Exactly, right? So I can say you work for a period, a very short period of time. So I, I hire you, contractor. Okay, you come in. I can give you a key today. The day I hire you, it will not start working until January 1st because that's when your contract starts. It works for one day or three days or whatever, and then it stops and never works again. Day and time, yes. So I can put, yeah, whatever the, and I can say, you know, from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Or limit it for one hour if they're supposed to be there one hour each day, if that's the case. So that's how we limit it. And then they can use it any time within that, and it's recorded. Hey, you know, you were coming in to do a job, you had two hours of access, but I saw you walked in 15 times. What's up with that? Okay. So we have to make do with the information. Yes, we do. Absolutely. And we know if they tried to use it and it didn't work. So this Bluetooth or programming devices is how you do the revalidation. So that, to answer your question fully now, let's say I had the key and it was programmed daily validation. So here we go and it's a Thursday and we go out for a Sanka set on Thursday night because whatever we wanted to and we lose the key. Tomorrow the key doesn't work. I don't have to do anything. Even if I don't report it lost, that key is not functional. Because to be functional, I have to turn it on. So traditional access control, the system is always on unless you go in and deactivate something. Think of this again in reverse. These keys are not working unless you validate them to work. Does that make sense? Yes and no. So I, I say yes because you can never say that nothing is unpenetrable. Right now, it has never been. The All the information that is on the key, it's all encrypted. Information that is on the door or whatever, the encrypted and tunneled. We are, in fact, ISO 27001 certified on our software platform and everything around it, which is the same as what Amazon uses, what Microsoft Azure uses, uh, and all the encryption data itself is ASA Ablet proprietary. So we meet the standards. And are all the keys, one standard key fits all, or is there Yep. One, one standard key fits all. Sure. Toys. <laughs> Toys are always fun. Yep. 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 So we limit it by the one certified. In this case, there's two, two answers. One is the key is on a daily validation. You don't need to. It doesn't need to know because it stops working. So automatically, it's no risk. It can't work. Okay. If, let's say, you program the key now, not for one day, but for six months, and you lost it after one month, now you have five months of schedule that's remaining on that key, which, to start with, would have been a recommendation not to do. But let's just say, because end users love to do things differently sometimes, um, that happens. Then what you do is you program, I'm going to jump up one slide. So a key, so one key fits all. Keys can be programmed to have different functions. You can program what we call a setup key. That setup key will write a blacklist onto a cylinder. And that cylinder will hold the list of lost keys. And if that key shows up, it will not let it in. Yes. Um, it wouldn't know. The cylinder can't disable the key. If that key ever shows up at any programming station or connects, it will disable it. But it goes on its blacklist until it expires. We, yeah. You program a key, you go around, you touch the locks. So uh, I hate using the word digital rekey, but you are taking a key, you're inserting it into a lock, it gets written on the lock. Exactly. Exactly. So in the software will tell you where this key can open. And then when you create the blacklist key, you can either to select whatever openings you want to go in blacklist. So you don't need to go to all of them. 
Not, not automatically. Nothing is communicating live. So if you audit the cylinder, you will get the information and you'll have a list of every key that tried. If that key happened to show up there, then you'll see it. But again, it's always forensic. Okay, it's not going to happen live. It is not. The one in that programming device, I believe, works. Oh, your kit? D I don't think it will be the DI key. Uh, no, 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 because we unprogrammed that one. The one on the wall I know works as I tried it. The one in your kit, I don't know. I, th I think it's um, the ones in that kit. They don't work? Sorry, you had a question. Yep. To the lock. Yep. If you want to lock out a lost key. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. It's very rare you'll need to do that because ideally you manage with revalidation at an interval that is small enough that your security is not threatened. But if I understand well, if you do a reprogrammation of all the keys you have, you don't have to bring back all the keys. You just have to put that on the master key and go to No. No. You're always managing keys. Every key gets the information, has information, and every key holder is responsible for validating their key. So every day, if it's a daily thing, you know, uh, let's say that wall device is installed in the vestibule here, and you have using keys within this facility. So Christine comes to work in the morning. She opens the door with access control, traditionally speaking, because it's the front door. She'll take her key out of the tracker cabinet, put it into the programming device, validate her key for that day. It functions. At the end of the day, she puts it back. If she didn't, she goes home and she loses the key. She has a good night. Uh, they all, key, uh, you know, it's the only time you take a master key and go to a lock is if is to block the blacklist a lost key. That is it. Yes. Yeah, but I hate the word bring back because this is done by the user anywhere. They're not actually bringing it back. No. It can't be. Unfortunately, no, it can't. It's a key that's specified with that task. So, you know, your key is Bluetooth. You have your phone. You don't need to bring back your key. You get up and you go to work. You just open your phone and you program it. Like this guy here. Yeah, if it's a non-Bluetooth key, you would go to this device. So, as an example, uh, Toronto Transit Commission. Okay, has 16,000 keys in circulation. All their subway stations are being installed with intelligent locks. Okay. They are going to have 42 of these devices. They're going to be installed all over the city in strategic hubs. Exactly. So he, they're not going back to you know the administration building. Yeah, the, the key holder will go to a place with a validator to get or receive information. Even a setup key or audit. I could be sitting here in Montreal, I get a phone call, so-and-so key is lost at, uh, I don't know, King Station in Toronto. I make a change, the guy takes his key, puts it in, blocks it, puts it back in, gets his programming. At the validation station, over there. Yeah. Yes. If you have a Bluetooth key. So some keys are Bluetooth, some are not. It's up to you. So one thing that we also do very uniquely is provide analytics to our audit data. Okay, so traditionally speaking, access control software give you audits, and it's kind of Excel-based. It's line by line. This is everything that's going on, right? Door open, door closed, whatever, which is good if you know what you're looking for. But it doesn't give you information like trends. Right. So what we have done is taken all that audit data that's coming in and say, well, 
who are your top activity users? Who are your people who are trying to get in and don't have access? What happens if, you know, or what are your locks most often used? All that data now is turned into analytics and graphs. So you can see trends with your system. And if you think about this for a second, this is big data. And I say big data because traditionally your access control stuff is only giving you 10% of your openings. Now you'll be getting data and analytics on an additional 40 to 60% of the openings that all the employees are going to. So it's a massive amount of information that you're going to see trends on. You're going to see what door everyone goes to for their smoke break kind of thing, right? So the specs now. They are digitally encrypted keys, 100% electronic. The key powers the lock. So there's no batteries in the lock. It's all in the key. Yeah. They could. So we do have, so track as an example, there is a strip that exists in our track of cabinets that can hold the keys and charge them. However, a charge is good for about 1,800 openings. So that's usually several months of, on, on a single charge. Okay. With the exception of Bluetooth, Bluetooth you're down to three, to tw three days to three weeks depending on how often you're connecting to the, the app. Okay. All the programming is on the key, like we said, not on the lock. There's over 10,000 audit events held on the key and you can open up to 16,000 cylinders with a single key. That's how many different openings you can program. Which is why I say you can eliminate that huge key ring and just have one credential now. Okay. Operating temperatures of the key because of the battery is minus 20 to plus 50. Remotely programmable and activation, that, f that revalidation between one day and one year. Okay. You can program a key to have multiple functions. Like we said, so it's one physical key that you order but you program it to be anything you want it to be. The locks, indoor, outdoor use as well. Okay, 2,000 events, audit events are held in the lock, as well as the blacklist, if, there, if you're in need. No wiring, batteries, or any door modifications. If this is the lock you're replacing, it's just a mechanical lock that you're replacing with an electronic one. Okay. It, indefinitely. It stays there until you remove it. So if you lose a key, okay, and the key, I'm gonna put it. there's a non-volatile memory. Yeah. So uh, the half-life on it is, I don't know, I have to look into the, the specifics of the memory chip, but we're talking, your, this key system probably won't be there anymore <laughs> when, when that memory dies. Um, but yeah, so the software-wise, it's there indefinitely. It doesn't have an expiry date. It's until you remove that piece of information. Indoor, outdoor, physical protection as well, minus 40 to plus 50. Okay, so this lock can go outside in our weather, no problem. In fact, there are major utilities across Canada that are using this outdoors because it is the only way they're able to get accountability and be compliant on those sites. Okay. From, from gas, oil, hydro to telecom, this is those types of locks being used. Other formats, locks that are available out there. Small format interchangeable core, standard key and knob, slage, cam locks, switch locks. And just to, to highlight what this means application-wise, switch locks. I have a customer using switch locks on heavy machinery that moves containers because they want to have accountability every single time a shipping container is moved. So it's on the machinery. Okay, We're using those in an application in Toronto on um, elevators, switches. We're using these right now on laundry, fuller service laundry in uh, the GTA, the cash boxes and vending. Euro profile, if you happen to be, and Cam, if you happen to be on a bus in Ottawa and you look at their video surveillance that's locked up in the Ottawa transit system, it's all XT. It's all these locks. What's happening is drivers were going in, turning off the video because they didn't want to be filmed during the day. So now they have accountability on who's accessing that information. So these are the types of out-of-the-box applications that you are able to secure with accountability and controlled access now. All working with the same key. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Uh, storage for narcotics as an example. This is a mobile unit. Okay. Server rooms. Often we do access control in the door. Once you get inside, it's a free-for-all. 
now we can have access directly on the rack. Okay? There is an intelligent imperial lock as well for that, but it's a price point now at that point. Okay? ITS, traffic. This is huge right now. So this is the boxes that control all the intersections. Rails, switches, and all that kind of stuff. It's a regular key. There's only two cuts in Canada, and you can buy it on eBay. Okay? For real. And now these boxes have become intelligent. You know, it's, it's city networks now in there and things like that. So it's considered critical infrastructure. So we've developed the specific lock for those boxes. It's the ITS box, lock, box, lock. E box lock, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So this is a retrofit for that. They've got one installed here on the wall, actually. Safes. We talked about safes earlier. Well, there's a standard comm lock on a safe. Now you can tie that safe into your access control system. This is the retrofit for that. Okay. Analytics we talked about, software as a solution, anywhere you're located because it is cloud-based, whether you're using desktop, wall, mobile, or Bluetooth, you're able to program keys. You are not collecting, so to speak, to do the programming. This is happening by key holders absolutely anywhere you are. Green or lead initiatives. This is becoming more and more of, of a, a need you know, Stefan's going to talk about this later with other products as well. Uh, government in particular, you're mandated. I need to do something that's LEED certified or at least give me points towards that or fall into a certain energy factor. Medicos products, one as a manufacturer, we count towards getting points because we are recycled content in our manufacturing process. And then this product particularly is completely off-grid. So there's no power consumption. So to summarize it all, intelligent keys provide you controlled access where keys are electronically programmed to open based on your authorization needs. You have compliancy, so you have audit tracking and responsibility assignments on all uses of a key. Easy retrofit on any opening. Literally challenge me to find something that we can't retrofit. That is what we do as a company. We're in, the, in fact, there's a major telecom right now. We're in the process of uh, designing a custom enclosure or a lock for one of their custom enclosures to secure 8,000 sites across Canada with this product. Because yeah, those sites are cell towers. There's no one there. Oddly enough, there's no cell reception. <laughs> Power data, analytics, and reporting. Okay, The software is very powerful in its capabilities of doing that. And it's cloud management. Like I said, we are ISO certified for our cloud solution. And we are working on future integrations as well with various access control systems. So it's going to be a partnership, an OEM partnership in the near future. Unlimited applications. I can't stress that more. This is not a door only application. Okay? It goes anywhere. Yep. If you want it from a cylinder, yes, that's exactly what you would do. Now, it's very rare you're going to actually do that process. And the reason being is... Yep. Yep. Yes. Exactly. To dump it into the system. Yep. Exactly. In that particular case, that's a perfect example of where, where why, excuse me, when you would want to go to that door. Uh, another one would be, hey, you know, we all go out for lunch, we come back, my laptop's gone, I know someone had to walk through that door. I don't want to wait till tomorrow where everyone normally would validate their key in the morning to get that information. I'm going to go to that door right now and see who the last 15 people were. That's in, in that case, yes. Okay. And that's it. So that's the intro to Intelligent Keys in Medical XT. Um, yeah. Yes. This is the override. There is no override. Yep. It's just like you would in a mechanical lock or in a comm lock on a safe. If your comm lock and safe is busted, you're calling a safe expert and they're cutting. 
this this is the lock. There's one exception. There's one single format, which is a mortise cylinder, which is on the wall. Okay, that has two two keys on it: an electronic key and a mechanical key. The application for that is very very specific, and it's an emergency response for fire, where you have a mechanical key that is for the fire department or emergency response, but the building itself is being managed with electronic. So nobody has that key other than emergency response. Okay, and it's only available in a mortise or in a rim. That's it. Otherwise, this is the key system. Your key fails, you drill this lock like you would. Somebody put crazy glue in your, in your regular mechanical key. Same type of thing. Yeah. No such thing. <laughs> yeah. Yep. 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 So often though what happens is let's say I'm talking to someone and he's like, Okay, I'll go to the site tomorrow to give you a look at it, give you a quote to potentially do the work. Mm -hmm. I don't know this person necessarily and I give him the lockbox number, he takes the key, he goes in. Uh, usually he's trying to do it, but let's say it doesn't happen. Right? So we've had issues for years where whoops, it's Friday afternoon, someone's left with the key and is about to put it back, and now we're like stressing is the job site lock. You have right. to go back also. So to me, this seems like a very like good solution is you put this on. But let's say, again, at the last minute, I'm like, oh, I need to give this guy access tomorrow. Mm -hmm. How does how would I give him access to be able to like use his phone? Like, can he tell him how to go download an app or something? Like, right. So last minute solution to kind of give someone access temporarily. This doesn't phone. fix that perfectly. Okay. okay. The reason being is you you still have a key. Right, so you have to get them that key. If you had a way to get them that key, then you can limit your risks significantly, but it doesn't facilitate, you know, hey, some random person, you're going to that place, I want to give you a credential to get in, and then it's gone. Uh, there, yeah. Yale could do that on the Accenture side. Uh, August lock. The thing is, you're flirting with residential commercial, and it's not quite in where we're gonna fit in terms of a a durability. This is a you know. No, absolutely, it, and that's why I mean, like I hear whatever, like you're you're considering today, like on a much different level than mine. Yeah. Like, on a very dumbed down level, like kind of, like it seems like it's a very good solution, but I'm wondering how. how that's that's tough. Like Airbnb. There is an an all this is a non assembly product, but there are products that exist. Yeah, this is a because you need some some type of kind of cylinder or something to program the cylinder and some days doesn't work for no energy. Yep. You have the battery doesn't save like low, something like that. And now people just don't have access to the office because of that. Go 
in, you put it, you use it, you manage your own people, you take it with you. We have full accountability. Investment one. Investment one. So we do actually we're doing uh, an oil and gas right now in Alberta, specifically that. We basically build that as like these giant trailer homes kind of things. Right? So all of this system is what's being managed on our entire site. But what it doesn't fix is this other application where you have a random come in and you need to give them some kind of an access. There is a product that exists that's out there, it's a non asset product. I am not aware of one that we do. Supra is a company that exists. Uh, you can manage it, you do it, it makes it false. Uh, Knox Box, I don't know if they have a Bluetooth one, but the Supra has a padlock and a vault with a Bluetooth on it where you can send someone a mobile credential and it will unlock it. But you are now managing batteries in these padlocks. Yeah, yeah. The batteries in these vaults. So is the app still in there? They automatically lock back the door? Depending on the hardware. So we're just the core. The hardware will be a function of whether or not it auto, auto locks. So if your door does that mechanically, it automatically locks when it closes. By changing this core, that won't change that. It will maintain that function. The padlock can't be retained. The thing is, is, unfortunately, human beings are always the weakest link. If I take that padlock and flip it onto the fence over here and lock it, well, I locked it. I just locked it on the fence and not on the door. Right? So we are, unfortunately, usually the biggest failure. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Chris. Okay, Lou. So now let's uh, get in the real stuff. <laughs> more intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, ce que je vais faire, je peux vous donner un overview sur deux produits présentement. Peut-être un troisième produit, mais ce qu'on m'a demandé, c'est faire un overview sur nos technologies Aperio et euh, notre produit Traca, qui est des cabinets pour sécuriser des clés intelligents et aussi pour euh, sécuriser euh, des assets, qu'on appelle. Okay. Euh, quand on dit Aperio, ce n'est pas un produit, c'est une technologie. C'est une technologie qui utilise du sans-fil, avec un, un signal z -way. Je vais juste vous jouer une petite introduction de Assab Est-ce que tout le monde connaissait Assab Non? OK. Whoops. Alors, comme la vidéo mentionnait, c'est une compagnie qui existe depuis 1994 et justement, on a fêté nos 25, euh, 25e année d'anniversaire vendredi dernier. Euh, on est dans plus de 70 pays présentement. On approche les 50 000 employés et avec un chiffre d'affaires de 10 milliards de dollars. Fait que, si vous ne connaissez pas Assabloy, probablement c'est parce que vous ne savez pas où est-ce Assabloy se situe, mais je vais vous montrer. À Sableuil, on, vous allez retrouver des produits à Sableuil dans toutes les sphères euh, d'activité que vous voyez, là, que ce soit euh, dans le hospitality, dans les hôtels, que ce soit dans le résidentiel, euh, autant dans les euh, transits de transport, tout ce qui est une ouverture. Une ouverture, pour nous, ça peut être une porte, ça peut être euh, un casier, tout ce qui est une ouverture, autant dans ce qui est intelligent ou juste aller à la sainte peinture. Alors, c'est certain que vous connaissez Assabloy, mais sous, sous un autre nom. Alors ça, c'est le journey d'Assabloy qui a débuté en 1994. Deux compagnies qui ont mergé ensemble. Une compagnie qui s'appelait Assa et une autre compagnie qui s'appelle Abloy. 
Abloy fonctionne aussi encore sous son propre nom dans d'autres sphères d'activité, mais euh, pour ce qui nous concerne aujourd'hui, c'est Assa Abloy. Alors, Assa Abloy on a commencé à faire des acquisitions comme Sargent, Sargent et Carbon. C'est la plupart de tout ce qui est quinquérie de portes que vous allez retrouver dans une institution, dans des gros buildings à Montréal. Si vous regardez sur les barillets, ça va être marqué le nom, c'est Sargent ou Carbon. Les deux compagnies appartiennent à, à Assa Abloy. Dans, après ça, on a, ils ont fait l'acquisition de Yale. Yale, c'est tout ce qui est résidentiel, commercial. Okay? Euh, ça peut être dans les, les types condos ou des systèmes avec du data on car, qu'on appelle. Mais aussi, vous reconnaissez HID, j'imagine. Alors, tous les lecteurs que vous voyez dans 90% des installations, c'est des lecteurs HID. Euh, vos cartes, probablement, de contrôle d'accès pour avoir accès à vos édifices, c'est probablement des HID. Euh, c'est pas mal euh, eux qui ont le la majeure partie là, de tout ce qui est lecteur là, indépendant de Alors, on a, on a continué les acquisitions. Alors, plusieurs acquisitions, on les mentionne pas tous là, mais on a fait au-dessus de 200 acquisitions. Euh, dont, dernièrement, une qui est importante, qu'on ne voit pas ici, c'est Mercury. Je ne sais pas si vous êtes un peu dans le contrôle d'accès. Tous les panneaux de contrôle euh, qui fonctionnent avec les contrôles d'accès, qui se compétitionnent entre eux d'ailleurs, utilise les boards Mercury. Alors, à sa table, on est propriétaire des Mercury. On voit pas ici, mais on a fait aussi l'acquisition de Traca, qui est une compagnie de UK, euh, en 2006, qui est, qui est pas ici. Une des dernières acquisitions aussi, August, dans le résidentiel, pour faire du Airbnb. Euh, August va être utilisé pour euh, Amazon, les livraisons à domicile, ces choses-là. On peut donner des accès aux livreurs, juste avec une fois, une time, un pin, ou encore faire du Airbnb pour une semaine. Euh, ça, c'est une autre division de à Sable, là, qui est le résidentiel. Okay? Quand on arrive dans l'hospitalité, euh, on va parler de Vink Card. Quand vous allez dans les, les hôtels, c'est tout du data on card. La femme programme votre carte, donne une carte. Ça, c'est du Vink Card, c'est division hospitalité de à Sable, là, ici. Um, fait, J'imagine que vous avez déjà vu un de ces brand names-là quelque part euh, dans votre carrière. Ça fait, fait qu'Assa va au-delà de ça. Chris a parlé tantôt un peu du continuum. Il vous a parlé bon, de ce qui était les, les, les serrures mécaniques, euh, les clés intelligentes. On vient de parler du data on card. Alors, l'intelligent, le credential est dans la, la carte qui est programmable. Alors, c'est un système de contrôle d'accès offline qu'on appelle. Aujourd'hui, moi, je vais vous euh, présenter nos solutions sans fil. Okay? Sans fil, c'est plusieurs technologies. Sans fil, ça peut être du Z-Way, ça peut être du Zigbee, euh, ça peut être du Bluetooth. Euh, tout ce qui est une communication sans fil, ça peut être du Wi-Fi aussi. Okay? Dans notre technologie à Perio, c'est du sans fil qui utilise un signal propriétaire à sa blog qui va se rapprocher de, du Z-Wave, okay, si vous voulez. Alors, c'est un, une coupe portée de sans fil, ce n'est pas du Wi-Fi, euh, qui a besoin d'un récepteur à proximité. Alors, on va parler d'un rayon peut-être entre 50-80 pieds, c'est à proximité. C'est un signal qui est quand même encrypté, 128 bits, euh, qui est encore un encryptage propriétaire à sa blog pratiquement impossible d'intercepter ce signal-là, c'est vraiment à courte portée. La personne va être à côté de la porte. Alors, dans, dans notre technologie Aperio, on a différents types d'ouvertures. On va avoir nos serrures standards, qui est une, une porte standard qu'on peut faire un rétrofit ou une nouvelle installation. On va les voir un peu plus tard. On peut les avoir autant dans la technologie, euh, la mécanique peut être autant du Car Carbon Russell ou du Sargent. C'est les deux manufacturiers que vous allez voir dans un édifice. J'arrive dans un édifice, exemple de la Sun Life, on va regarder euh, toute la mécanique qui est déjà là. On voit si c'est du Sargent ou du Carbon. Ben, on va proposer une solution intégrée en Sargent pour avoir la même continuité. Alors, ça utilise la même mécanique, le même fini. Alors, c'est une belle continuité de de l'édifice qui est déjà installé. Ça peut être du Sargent aussi. Fait qu on a différentes technologies. Ici, on a notre série PR. C'est qu'en plus d'avoir un lecteur qui est intégré, avoir un pin. Fait qu on peut faire 
jumeler les deux, on passe la, euh, une carte, et puis on fait un pin, ou l'un ou l'autre. Cette série-là est en fin de vie, le pin va être intégré dans notre nouvelle version. Okay. Mais on continue à supporter et à vendre le produit, parce qu'on en a des, des, des milliers de, déjà installés euh, juste ici en région de Montréal. On a aussi dans notre autre famille ici d'Adam's Right, ça va être plus pour les portes extérieures, cadrage euh, d'aluminium. On le fait aussi en sans fil avec des rimes de sortie, des, des push-bars de sortie. On va voir, je vais vous montrer aussi euh, notre lecteur qui est sans fil, puis ses applications, les cabinets de serveurs. On parle beaucoup de cybersécurité de nos jours. Fait que souvent, on va sécuriser la salle des serveurs, mais quand on arrive au niveau des, des, des cabinets, ils sont déverrouillés parce qu'on n'a pas la clé, on ne trouve pas la clé ou c'est trop compliqué de gérer les clés. Mais à ce moment-là, on installe ça qui est sans fil, qui, fon qui fonctionne tous à batterie. On n'a pas besoin d'alimentation non plus. Et puis, on peut avoir un audit trail qui est euh, vraiment un, un accès au serveur directement. Ici, on va retrouver la même technologie à Perio, mais là, on va parler plus des, des, des cabinets, des tiroirs. Ça peut être pour sécuriser euh, des fichiers. Euh, où ce qu'on le retrouve le plus souvent, ça va être dans les hôpitaux, sécuriser les, les petits cabinets de narcotiques. À l'intérieur des ambulances aussi, ils vont sécuriser le narcotique. Là. Euh, dans les CLSC ou certains hôpitaux, dans les chambres longue durée, ils vont sécuriser euh, les effets personnels des patients. Au lieu de donner une clé, ils peuvent se faire voler la clé par, par n'importe qui puis se faire voler. Ils vont donner une carte. Si par la carte, on cancelle la carte. Mais on va toujours avoir un audit trail s'il y a quelqu'un qui a eu accès. Euh, fait que de plus en, il y a de plus en plus de vols, croyez-le ou non, là, euh, dans ces institutions-là. Je vais vous montrer physiquement ce que ça a l'air, puis je vais vous expliquer les avantages qu'on a avec ces CEO là Comme vous voyez ici, je l'ai en blanc. Fait que, en ce sens, la configuration peut être différente selon si vous voulez avoir quelque chose plus tendance, il y a des, des euh, designers qui vont nous demander euh, avoir le lever ici avec euh, un revêtement en cuir. On a, on a fait pour euh, Google le, le serreur, le, le poignet Google, c'est le G de Google pour le salle de conférence. Fait que ce qu'on fait, c'est encore là, avec une imprimante 3D, on va faire un sample, si c'est accepté, on va produire euh, la poignée, mais est, on est les manufacturiers du hardware et de l'intelligence, alors on peut faire euh, pratiquement ce qu'on veut. Quand on parle d'une porte, okay, et puis on veut installer une porte, la majorité des coûts, c'est l'installation. Pourquoi? Parce qu'on doit amener toute la communication à la porte, l'alimentation aussi. C'est quoi que ça inclut dans, dans une porte? Puis pour se rendre à la porte, il faut installer aussi des conduits, on s'entend. Ce que ça prend à une porte, la première chose, c'est la mécanique. Okay? Alors là, on a Jaurier qui va venir installer sa mécanique. Après ça, on a l'intégrateur de sécurité. La première chose qu'il va faire, il va venir passer un câble pour, pour alimenter puis communiquer avec son lecteur de carte. Il va avoir aussi un contact de porte à, à passer et une requête de sortie, le fameux T-Rex qui déclenche toujours. Celui-là est dans le levier. Fait que tout est intégré sur un part number qui est livré. Alors, faire un rétrofit, un remplacement d'une porte standard qu'on voit là, puis je, en une heure, je peux la mettre fonctionnel en ligne avec le système de contrôle d'accès ici. Versus une installation typique, amener tout le câblage, s'assurer d'avoir un électricien pour amener l'alimentation pas loin, euh, passer les conduits et installer toutes les, les, les composantes. On parle d'environ 4 heures d'une installation versus une heure. Okay. Fait que les les euh, différentes configurations, comme si vous voyez, j'ai un lecteur blanc, mais les lecteurs, c'est des lecteurs multitechnologies. On va parler, je ne sais pas si vous connaissez les termes, iClass, Prox, MyFair. On a aussi Mobile Access, fait on, on va avoir la communication Bluetooth ou NFC, qui est un Near Field Communication. D'autres technologies vont utiliser ça. Key override, pas key override, format Mortais, aucun Mortais. Aussi, il va avoir le DPS. Euh, le DPS, en jargon, c'est Door euh, Position Switch. Fait que, euh, la latch va être monitérée si elle est déployée ou non. Tu sais, si quelqu'un décide de, de le TP, mais la porte est ouverte, euh, le système va le savoir. C'est déjà tout intégré dedans. Ici, à l'endos, on a la communication. 
qui est ici, et les batteries. C'est six batteries de A alcaline, tout ce qui est basic. On met pas des batteries au lithium, ça c'est certain. Deux raisons. Batterie, euh, si on met une batterie au lithium, on perd euh, le fire rated. Parce qu'une batterie lithium peut exploser au feu. Puis nos serreux sont testés avec des batteries alcalines. Parce qu'une alcaline va perdre son, son courant euh, vraiment euh, avec une pente descendante, tandis qu'un lithium, on va perdre tout de suite le courant. Je vais expliquer tantôt la durée de vie des batteries. Mais une chose qui est, qui est très intéressante sur ces produits-là, c'est qu'on ne peut pas faire avec une partie standard. On appelle ça le « privacy mode », mode privé ou un « local lockdown » pour les, les universités ou les campus. En fait, c'est ce, ce bouton ici. Là. On peut l'activer ou le désactiver dans l'installation, si on veut l'utiliser ou non. Si on l'utilise en pressant ce bouton-là, ça désactive notre lecteur. Okay. Alors, si on a une salle de bain, par exemple, on va pouvoir le mettre en privacy mode. Si quelqu'un essaye avec sa carte, il ne pourra pas rentrer, c'est occupé. Ça peut être une salle de conférence. Mais dans les écoles, c'est des classes. Alors, tous les événements qui se passent présentement aux États-Unis, euh, il y a un tireur, par exemple, qui, est, qui rentre dans l'école, vole une carte d'un agent de sécurité, du directeur, puis il peut ouvrir les portes, il peut rentrer dans les classes. Les professeurs, à ce moment-là, vont faire un « local lockdown ». Au lieu d'attendre que le système de sécurité fasse un « global lockdown », qu'on appelle, il va avoir fait son propre « local lockdown ». Des actifs de lecteur. Seule carte qui peut « overrider euh, », va être un, une carte, un exemple, « super user », qui va être sécurisé quelque part. Okay. Fait c'est un des avantages qu'on peut faire que vous ne pouvez pas faire sur un système de contrôle d'accès. Fait on fait beaucoup de rétrofit présentement dans les campus universitaires, pour une de ces raisons-là. Okay. Des questions jusqu'à là? Même technologie ici, je vous ai montré avec, pour les portes de sortie, on va y passer vite. Dans un cas comme ça, est-ce qu'on peut simplement enlever l'usage de l'électrisme? C'est avec le système de contrôle d'accès, oui. Tout ce que les, 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 euh, les actions qu'on pouvait faire avec un système de contrôle d'accès standard, vous pouvez faire parce que. Non, à ce moment-là, le seul que vous allez pouvoir gérer, c'est le key override. Okay? Si, pour un exemple, vous n'avez pas les cartes ou le, le système, même si le système est hors ligne avec le contrôle d'accès, cette serrure-là, elle est intelligente, elle continue à fonctionner d'un mode autonome. Elle a une mémoire cache de 2500 users, utilisateurs, et les 10, 10 000 dernières transactions. Alors, elle va reconnaître la carte d'un user qui était, qui était valide le deux jours, mais elle va se souvenir aussi euh, de ces transactions si c'était sur cédule de 9 à 5 ou 24 heures sur 24 qui avait accès. Okay? Ouais. Quand le système revient en vie, elle fait juste un update, une mise à jour de ses activités, puis le système de contrôle d'accès va faire ses mises à jour d'activité aussi. Okay? Euh, fait que c'est vraiment, est, tout est à la porte. L'installation, c'est encore blâche. Par contre, ça communique avec notre récepteur, euh, courte distance, que j'ai... Ah, il était là. On l'appelle, nous, le hub. C'est le récepteur courte court distance. Comment dit, on a notre serrure ici qu'on a mis à la porte et je peux installer ce récepteur-là soit au plafond, au milieu de la salle ici ou sur le mur. Elle va prendre, euh, parce qu'on a plus, plusieurs technologies, mais la technologie RS-485, contrôle d'accès standard, elle va prendre jusqu'à huit serrures dans ce rayon ici. Si j'ai neuf serrures, ben je, je rajoute un autre hop. Okay? Mais quand je dis serrure, je dis ouverture, parce que ça peut être euh, une serrure, mais ça peut être aussi juste un lecteur, ça peut être un, 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 un produit de technologie à période. Lui, par exemple, il est câblé, mais en bas voltage, directement au contrôleur du système de contrôle d'accès. Si on arrive dans d'autres technologies de, de la période de produit, le lecteur s'en fait. Je sais pas, de plus en plus, on voit les nouvelles bâtisses et les designers, ils, ils aiment beaucoup le verre. Hein. Exemple, on, a, on va avoir une porte pleine, mais les cordages sont tous en verre ou en marbre. On peut pas nécessairement percer du marbre ou du verre puis passer un fil, tu sais, comme un mur standard. Fait que souvent, c'est un casse-tête pour les installateurs. Euh, ils vont aller jusqu'à mettre des pédestales pour mettre le, le lecteur dessus. 
À ce moment-là, on arrive ici avec cette technologie-là. C'est un lecteur qui va se coller sur le marbre, sur, sur le verre, euh, en surface. C'est un take 3 m très résistant. À l'endroit aussi, exemple, si c'est un verre, j'ai un backplate qui vient pour venir cacher l'envers le, du, du lecteur. Le lecteur marche à batterie. Et puis, lui, il va communiquer au hub. Et le hub, lui, il prend sa sortie, exemple, lecteur, qui s'en va au contrôleur. Donc, on peut avoir une serrure standard avec une gâche électrique ou un électro-aimant, mais en utilisant ce lecteur-là. Plusieurs applications, pensez à ça, parce que de plus en plus, ça aura une nouvelle bâtisse, il est lobé avec beaucoup de verre. Puis, vous avez trouvé une solution pour installer un lecteur. C'est ça. Mais, où est-ce que... Aussi, vous allez retrouver souvent dans les lobbies maintenant, euh, ou les nouveaux tours à condo, c'est qu'on va avoir une porte de verre et un cadrage de verre. Je ne sais pas si vous avez deux jours euh, cette, cette situation-là. Qu'est-ce qu'on fait? On est obligé de percer la porte de verre, mettre des électro-aimants en haut. On va parler de 8 heures, 12 heures d'ouvrage. C'est pas tout le monde qui veut percer une porte de verre parce que ça peut être dispendu s'il marche ton coup. Quand la SAB est arrivé avec une nouvelle solution, on peut l'avoir en PIN ou la technologie Aperio. Encore là, ça peut rouler en mode autonome ou avec un contrôle d'accès. Qui vient se prendre en sandwich. On n'a pas percé la, la porte de verre ni le cadrage de verre. Ce qu'on fait, c'est qu'on met un, un sleeve qu'on appelle ici, qui est collé avec une colle exprès de verre. Et puis, on vient prendre, clipper en sandwich notre serreux et sur notre cordage. On est les seuls à faire ça présentement. C'est un nouveau produit. On a gagné plusieurs prix par rapport à ça. On a aussi notre mode privacy mode qu'on parlait tantôt. Voilà. Et puis, on a notre lever ici. Oui. 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 À ce moment-là, Aperio est, est en, en, en ligne. C'est un système de contrôle d'accès en ligne. Fait qu'on peut avoir juste un, un bouton, la même chose qu'on va faire une ouverture d'une gâche électrique. Fait que ça va être un remote online. Euh, bonne question. Euh, je n'ai pas regardé s'il y a le mobile access. Je ne veux pas vous dire oui, je ne veux pas vous dire non non plus. Mais euh, je sais que c'est multi-technologie, fait iClass, Proxy, Us, MyFair. Euh, fonction mobile, je vais, je vais vérifier après la, la présentation, mais c'est une bonne question. Je ne sais pas. Je ne pas regarder. Autant que ton système de contrôle d'accès peut le prendre. Mais si vous voulez l'avoir en mode autonome, vous pouvez enregistrer jusqu'à 10 cartes dans sa cache. Okay? Euh, souvent, c'est qu'on va, lorsqu'on est en, en mode construction d'un site, on va installer les CRE, mais on veut les utiliser déjà pour les, les contracteurs. Mais on n'a pas le système de, de contrôle d'accès actif. On ne veut pas lui passer des clés on peut enregistrer jusqu'à 10 cartes de contracteurs à l'intérieur. Fait qu'ils peuvent l'utiliser en mode autonome jusqu'à temps que le système puis la bâtisse soit. Il va garder un audit trail ici à l'intérieur. Jusqu'à 10 000 transactions. OK? Fait que pensez à ça, cette solution-là, si jamais euh, vous, vous êtes confronté là, à une porte d'avant. Oui? Il, il, il va être fonction, euh, peu importe la sortie ou l'ouverture que vous voulez protéger avec ça, il va suivre les mêmes normes du bâtiment à un temps relié au système de contrôle d'accès. C'est exemple, dans, si on avait une porte que euh, ça prenait un remote, un release, une boîte bleue là, pour euh, sortir d'urgence, à ce moment-là, ça c'est relié au système de contrôle d'accès. En tirant la boîte bleue, le système de contrôle d'accès va peut désactiver l'ouverture, tout ça serait un électro aimant, mais de toute façon, ici, quelqu'un veut sortir, c'est une action. Okay? Il ne peut, peut pas être verrouillé de l'intérieur, la personne. Okay? Tandis que si on met des électro aimants, c'est là qu'on a besoin d'avoir une porte bleue pour relâcher les électro aimants. Ou si un système, système d'incendie déclenche, il faut que les électro aimants se relâchent pour avoir les portes de sortie. Celle-là, c'est une action. Oui. Oui. 
Il y, a, il y a plusieurs façons. Ma raison. Et puis, je pense que même euh, ici, Christine, avec une autre technologie sans fil, ils ont eu, il y avait le même problème, les, les batteries lâchaient toujours. Euh, chez Assemble, nos intégrations avec les contrôles d'accès, on ajoute aussi la durée de vie des batteries. Alors, il va faire une analytique selon les activités à la porte. La serrure va informer le contrôle d'accès. Selon mes activités, j'en ai encore pour deux ans, deux ans et demi, 30 jours, 90 jours. J'en ai à 90 jours à peu près. Euh, de durée de vie, en plus d'envoyer une notification euh, à travers le contrôle d'accès, le contrôle d'accès, lui, il peut prendre action pour t'envoyer un courriel à maintenance. Euh, je pense que j'en avais une tantôt, la batterie commence à être faite. Non, OK. Euh, elle va commencer à faire des, euh, des flashs rouges. Elle va être fonctionnelle, mais en 30 et 90 jours à l'avance, elle va aviser avec un signal aussi visuel. En plus d'aviser le contrôle d'accès, en plus d'avoir une notification par courriel. OK. Euh, et là, si on arrive, puis on, on est dead avec, mais on va être obligé d'utiliser le key override. OK. Ouais, non. Euh, et moi, jusqu'à date, mais, euh, ça fait deux ans présentement, je suis à Sable, puis euh, j'ai fait plusieurs projets avec. Je n'ai aucun problème. Le seul problème que j'avais eu à un moment donné, c'est que quelqu'un, justement, il avait 900 serreux. L'acheteur voulait faire un bon coup. Il dit, je remplace toutes les batteries pour des batteries lithium. Ça lui a coûté cher. Il a 100 serreux fois 6 batteries. Pour, euh, après ça, découvrir que quand les batteries lâchaient, ils lâchaient d'un coup sec. Celle-là ici, on a un jumper en dessous. Qui va être un mini USB, si tu veux. Et puis là, on va l'alimenter soit avec le bloc. Euh, d'alimentation que j'ai fait tantôt ou avec euh, l'ordinateur. Okay. Oui. Euh, chez nous, on a tout le temps une option euh, si la batterie tombe. Versus d'autres, peut-être manufacturiers qui sont peut-être un peu plus négligents là-dessus. Même nos, nos, euh, nos serrures résidentielles, vous allez les voir dans le camion tantôt. Vous regardez, vous allez voir certains serrures résidentielles là, qui sont attachées. Vous avez deux euh, points de métal ici okay, ou sous la serrure ça, c'est un jumper avec une batterie 9 volts. Fait que si j'arrive puis j'ai pas de key override, ceux que vous allez voir qui n'ont pas de key override, ils ont deux points de contact. C'est pour prendre une batterie de 9 volts puis juste assez pour euh, l'ouvrir. Pardon? Oui, oui. Tu batterie de 9 volts, là. C'est ça, avec le jumper. On va avoir de l'alimentation pour avoir accès à l'arrière puis changer les batteries. Fait que, ceux qui se demandent la durée de vie des batteries, ici on a des scénarios si on a 15 activités par jour sur une porte on va arriver jusqu'à 4 ans euh, de durée de vie des batteries si on a 60 activités par jour ben là on va arriver à oups, on va à 2 ans okay. mais encore là le signal euh, le, le, le système va vous le dire si exemple on a une, une serrure pour x, y raison qu'elle a une activité de 200, 300 activités par jour, les batteries ne font pas deux ans, certains. On a une option qu'on va amener euh, du, de l'alimentation sans fil, par induction. On amène juste dans le cadre de porte, notre alimentation, et sur le, le cadrage de la porte elle-même, on a l'autre contact. Quand la porte est fermée, elle fonctionne par induction. Okay. Quand la porte est ouverte, Là, on va fonctionner sur son mode batterie. Ça, c'est une solution d'appoint qu'on a pour euh, l'alimentation. Comme je vous mentionnais tantôt, au niveau de nos récepteurs, qui sont des waves, à période, tout dépendant de la configuration de la pièce ou le nombre de, de, de serreurs qu'on veut sécuriser, 
on, on va faire un site survey qu'on appelle pour savoir où qu'on va installer notre récepteur. On ne veut pas le mettre à côté d'un émetteur Wi-Fi non plus. Euh, il faut faire vraiment un scan de l'environnement des fréquences parce que chacun de ces hubs-là utilise toujours trois fréquences en permanence qui alternent d'un à l'autre, mais on a au-delà de 28 fréquences différentes. Fait on peut faire des combinaisons de trois fréquences de 1 à 28. Selon le scan qu'on fait, on va voir oh, la fréquence 6, aucune activité ici, la 12 et la 21. On va prendre 6, 12, 21, 6, 12, 21. On évite les, euh, les interférences. J'ai des specs qui vont dire 50 pieds, j'en ai d'autres qui disent 70 pieds, j'en ai d'autres qui disent 80 pieds. Ça dépend toujours de l'environnement. Moi, je vous dirais, là, entre 50 et 80 pieds, on est sûr. J'ai des édifices, comme dans des hôpitaux, que ça traverse le mur de béton, puis ça va chercher, elle voit les, les serrures au deuxième étage, tu sais. C'est sûr que on le recommande pas. Puis on voit le signal aussi. On voit le signal qui sont là, sur le hub ou sur la serrure on va voir la, la densité du signal. Tu sais, quand on parle en sans fil, que ce soit Wi-Fi, tu faut faire attention. Euh, exemple, dans une école, ils vont faire l'installation du hub, la serrure, ils vont prendre huit pas, mais ils font ça le soir ou le week-end. Quand l'école recommence, le lundi, puis la cloche sonne, puis on a 150 élèves dans le corridor en même temps, ils absorbent ces, ces fréquences-là. Là, finalement, peut-être notre serrure qu'on pognait à 200 pieds, on va revenir à 80 pieds. C'est comme en vidéo. En vidéo, le monde va dire, « Ah, j'ai plein de caméras, ça va super bien, je les mets à 30 images secondes. » Quand il arrive le lundi matin, puis tous les élèves sont tous en même temps là, dans, dans le corridor, les serveurs crashent, les, 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 le network crash, parce que là, il y a trop d'activités qui se passent à la caméra. C'est la même chose quand on va parler de signal Wi-Fi ou de signal Zigbee. Euh, on a un de nos partenaires euh, qui a fait une analyse d'une installation. Il venait de faire une installation de 20 portes. Il est revenu en arrière puis il est allé voir une installation typique, similaire, qu'il avait fait quelques mois précédents avec 20 portes standards. Quand on va parler, on amène la, le T-Rex, le lecteur, le contact de porte, le câblage. Et juste en... Hardware, ici, le genre, c'est le hardware. Le hardware, c'est quoi? C'est <coughs> la poignée, tout ce qui est division 8, si vous voulez, là. La mécanique. Après ça, euh, on, ils ont calculé le, le prix du matériel, l'électroaimant, la gâche électrique, là, toutes ces composantes, et son temps d'installation. Versus une installation impériale. Fait qu'on avait plus le hardware, parce que le hardware, il est inclus. C'est un part number qui venait avec. Et puis, au niveau euh, de la main d'œuvre, ben, c'est certain que je disais, on parle d'une heure d'installation. On a des, des, des partenaires qui sont capables de les installer à l'intérieur de 20 minutes, euh, 25 minutes, puis ils sont déjà en ligne. Euh, fait qu'on a, on a l'économie est là. Okay? Mais pas juste ça, c'est vous, vous allez, euh, pour ceux qui sont plus responsables là, euh, au niveau des end users, c'est que vous allez gérer un fournisseur pour la porte. S'il y a un problème à la porte, est-ce que c'est le serrurier que j'appelle? Est-ce que c'est le contracteur sécurité que j'appelle? Non. C'est une personne, la personne qui la porte. Quand on va dans les appels d'offres, ça va bien parce que, je ne sais pas vous êtes dans les appels d'offres un peu, mais on a la division 8, on a la division 28. Division 8, c'est tout ce qui est mécanique, le serrurier. Division 28, c'est les intégrateurs de sécurité, qui, ça va être l'électronique, le contrôle d'accès. Maintenant, on peut tous mettre sous division 28. Autre technologie, là, on parlait de sans fil avec le hub. On a aussi les mêmes serrures, mêmes configurations en Wi-Fi. De plus en plus, le Wi-Fi est accessible partout, sur les campus, euh, même ici, on pourrait tout mettre les serrures en, en Wi-Fi. Fait on peut utiliser maintenant le Wi-Fi avec la même technologie, même serrure sur le réseau du client. C'est une configuration de Wi-Fi, la serrure est autonome. Si tu perds ton Wi-Fi, la serrure continue à fonctionner. Okay, C'est intelligent. Ouais. Très bon point. Ce qui arrive, c'est que la Wi-Fi, on dit, entre autres, elle est offline, dans le sens que 
elle doit gérer un routeur. Un routeur demande beaucoup de courant. Fait que ce qu'on fait, la, notre technologie, c'est qu'on le met en dormance, le routeur. Il va probablement se réveiller quatre ou cinq fois par jour pour voir s'il y a des nouvelles données à, à recevoir. Par contre, il va se réveiller à toutes les fois que quelqu'un va vous demander accès. Là, il va, il va aller faire son update. Fait, le point négatif, c'est si je veux faire un, une ouverture à distance, un remote on lock, elle dort. Elle ne saura pas que, que c'est la chose. Mais ce n'est pas à tous les endroits qui ont besoin de faire des remote on lock non plus. Okay? Le reste, c'est euh, toutes les mêmes spécifications. Le monde va me demander, eh ouais, mais là, ça va descendre mon network, ça prend plus de trafic sur le network. Oui. Oui, s'il a fait la mise à jour pendant la période qu'il était en dormance. Okay. Quand il va passer sa carte, on va dire non, 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 non. C'est une question de dixième de seconde pour passer en date. Elle est faite avant. Aussitôt que, elle, aussitôt qu'il va passer son directeur, elle va vérifier s'il est encore disponible sur son contrôleur. Okay. Si le contrôleur est offline, là, il va probablement te laisser rentrer. Okay. C'est que si je veux l'ouvrir à distance, remote on lock, je veux me loguer, remote on lock, euh, je ne pourrais pas. Par contre, euh, on peut prendre, on parlait tantôt de mobile access, elle prend mobile access. Oui, lui est toujours en ligne. Okay. Par contre, quand on va parler de Wi-Fi, souvent le monde va dire, oui, mais est-ce que ça prend beaucoup de data sur mon network, c'est qu'il à peu près un courriel par jour dans ces, en data. C'est juste des 1 et des 0. Fait que ça ne prend pas beaucoup de... de, de euh, voyons. De network pour fonctionner. Par contre, on a des... Euh, on parlait de gouvernement tantôt. Gouvernement euh, où il y a certaines institutions, institutions financières, ces choses-là, euh, sont encore pas trop friands du sans-fil, que ce soit à...